morning, everybody. Happy Monday. All right, my name is Mary Francis, and I am one of Henry Junwali's medical Qigong students. Thank you so much for waking up on Monday to join in with the medical Qigong. We are can, going to continue today with the Golden Eight series, and we're going to be working on the liver and the gallbladder. But first, we're going to do our warm ups. So we're gonna start with our feet together and then open up. Feet are going to be hip width, shoulder width apart. And the feet are parallel. We're settling into the space, allowing the tip of the tongue to touch the roof of the mouth. Relaxing the feet. Softening the knees. Relaxing the hips and the low back, maybe dropping the tailbone a little bit. We're having a quick visitor, my dog Kaylee. She's making sure that the perimeter is secure. Then we're going to relax the shoulders. And then maybe let the very top of the head reach up into the sky, creating a little bit of space within the cervical spine. We're breathing in and out through the nose. And then tapping with the right hand, I'm going to try to be mirroring you. We're gonna open up the left side of the body. So part of Qigong is, as always, keeping that internal focus. So no matter what's happening around you, you can stay within your own mind, within your body, within the breath, within the moment. And you're going to start traveling up the midline. Waking up those channels. Promoting both blood and chi circulation. Slowing down before wiping away anything you don't need or want and letting it go back into the earth. Opening up the right side of the body now. our minds to connect. Our mind intention and our mind's eye working with the tapping with the area that's being tapped.
And then wiping away anything we don't need or want, letting it go back into the earth. Widening our stance so that we can open the channels in the lower half of the body. We're tapping the inner thigh and then up at the hip crease. Maybe we can start to deepen the breath, drawing the breath closer to the lower Dantian. Allowing to fill up the entire torso. Continuing on down the inner aspect of the legs towards just above the medial malleolus, the ankle. Or wherever it's comfortable for you before then transitioning to the lateral aspect of the legs. Traveling back on up to the hips and the glutes. Continuing on up to underneath the rib cage, the low back, wherever it's comfortable for you. We're looking to activate the kidneys, the kidney energy. Warming the lower back. And then resting the palms at the lower back. Circling down the sides and up the spine. Gathering the energy to the kidneys. Before then resting the palms at the low back. And then gently closing the eyes as you breathe in through the nose you're guiding that breath in the chi to the low back allowing it to fill up with energy and then as you exhale allowing that energy to flow and travel wherever it's needed within the body Using the mind's eye, the mind intent, we're guiding the breath through the nose, down to the torso, greeting the lower back and the kidneys. And then as you exhale, you're just allowing the body and mind to rest and relax. Inhaling and exhaling at your own pace. Allowing the breath to flow freely. and settling into the body, settling into the space. Then when you're ready, gently opening the eyes, releasing the hands and closing, bringing that left foot back to the right. Okay, today we're gonna to be working on the liver gallbladder exercise of the golden eight. It's called turn and look back. But before we do, we're gonna warm up the shoulders just a tiny bit more. So we're gonna open up hip width, shoulder width apart. And this is not so much Qigong exercise as an exercise to help opening up the tissues and the joints of the shoulder, as well as really allowing the breath to connect with the movement. 
So first, we're just gonna bring the shoulders forward and then they're gonna come up towards the ears. They're gonna roll back and then down. So we're circling the shoulders nice and slow. We're gonna inhale as we roll the shoulders forward, coming up, and then exhale as the shoulders pull back and then come down. All right. We're just gonna do this a couple of times, a few times. And the goal is to start harmonizing the breath with the movement. So it's as if the breath is the promoting force, the promoting action, bringing the shoulders forward and up. And then as the breath exhales, the body leaves the body, it's allowing the shoulders to come back and then descend. And then as always, work within your comfort zone. This is including the breath as well as the movement. So if perhaps you've had shoulder issues or they're not feeling so great today, then you simply make the movement smaller. The movement can be super, super subtle. It's the mind intent, it's the breath. Those are the most key components. The movement is, is a little extra bonus. And then we're gonna switch directions. So as the shoulders go back behind us and then come back up to the ears, we're inhaling. As they move forward and descend, we're exhaling. And then if you can relax everything else in the body, you may find, I was finding, that my face was starting to tense up. Relax the face, relax the jaw. Everything should be as relaxed as possible. And if perhaps you feel yourself tightening up, maybe you need to, to slow the movement or relax the movement or make the movement more subtle, a little smaller. Relaxing the shoulders and then closing, bringing that left foot back to the right. Okay, so here is the exercise, going over the mechanics first. We're gonna open up and for this first bit of the exercise, go ahead and keep your stance just a little wider than shoulder width apart or indeed shoulder width apart. You can go quite wide in this exercise. If you've done this exercise before, feel free to go as wide as you like, as long as, once again, it's comfortable for you. But for those of us who are starting out with this exercise, you want to have the stance a little more narrow to find out what your body's comfortable with, what it wants to do. So from here, you're gonna turn the torso to the left. You're going to bend the lead leg, in which case it's going to be the left leg, keeping that right leg somewhat straight. And then you're gonna take the shoulder that's theoretically closest to me, which is theoretically your right shoulder or the shoulder that's connecting with this rear leg. You're gonna roll it forward and up and then look over that shoulder down to the fourth toe or if you can't see the fourth toe, the floor, or if you can't see either of those, you're going to imagine the eyes drifting down towards the floor. And then to get out, you're simply going to relax this back leg and float back to the center. Now I'm cheating, I'm not, I'm not adding in all of the mechanics yet. There are some very important things to do with the hands but first we're working on this kind of slidey thing. Movement, movement sounds better. Go ahead and turn your torso to the right, extending the rear leg, which is now the left leg, bending the right leg, and then rolling this shoulder, the one that's theoretically closest to me, your right shoulder, sorry, your left shoulder, left shoulder, 
forward, up, and then look over that shoulder to the floor or the fourth toe or imagining your vision, the eyes, the gaze flowing to the floor. Then you're gonna bend this rear leg and float back to the center, relaxing both the legs and the shoulder. All right, so more stuff. You're gonna place your hands in this L shape. You're going to wrap the forefingers, the index fingers, wrapping towards the inner thigh and the thumbs are going to be at the side of the body. Okay, for those of you who are familiar with IT bands, the thumbs are gonna be about where the IT band is, okay? And you want to extend the arms so that they're not fully bent and up at the hips. They should be about a third of the way down the leg but you do want a little bit of a curve, a little bit of a bend in the elbow. So you don't want them locked and straight. You want them to be nice and soft and relaxed. Okay, another element. If this exercise puts pressure on your knees, I have heard, I have not been snowboarding, but I've heard that it's similar to snowboarding where you can actually come up onto the blades of your feet so when we're turning to the left, if you want to allow your feet to um, rock back and forth upon the earth, upon the floor, that's okay. Remember, never putting pressure on the joints. If you need to minimize the movement, maybe stay in a very subtle, very subtle turn, that's fine. So let's. Let's go with the mechanics again. So the forefingers are pointing towards the inner thigh. The thumbs are pointing towards the outside of the thigh, the IT band area. We're turning to the left. We're putting more weight on that left leg. Then we're circling the shoulder forward, up, and gazing over that shoulder down to the earth. We're creating kind of that crescent moon shape with the back element of the body or side element on the right side of the body. And then we're gonna soften the knee and float back to the center. I'm smiling because I was about to say it's easy, right? I, th I think it's very complicated, but it feels so good. It really gets in there and stretches and, and moves the tissue, moves the organs. And since it's for the liver and gallbladder, it helps, um, it helps move the chi and relax frustration. So we're gonna turn to the right, extend that left leg, put more weight on the right, move the shoulder that's closest to knee, Forward, up, look over, gazing at the floor, gazing at the fourth toe, the one next to the baby toe, and then softening that rear leg and floating back to the center. Okay, let's work with the breath. So we're inhaling as we turn, inhaling as we extend, inhaling as we raise up that shoulder, looking over, and then exhaling as we float back to the center. Inhaling, still inhaling, inhaling, and then exhaling as we float back to the center. Inhaling, 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 and then exhaling as we float back to the center. So we do hang out for just a moment at the very pinnacle, at the apex of the movement, and then we go back to the center, redistributing the weight. Inhaling, 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 drawing up the breath, exhaling as we float back to center. Inhaling, inhaling, inhaling. 
Exhaling as we float back to center. Go ahead and keep up with the movements. I'm gonna talk just a little bit as we do so. If you don't get this exercise all in one day, don't worry, we're gonna review it lots and lots. So the gallbladder channel very loosely encompasses the eye, the top of the shoulder, the outside of the rib cage, down the IT band, zigzagging on the outside of the lower leg, underneath the ankle, and then to the fourth toe, that baby toe. So see, we're encompassing all those areas in this exercise. Inhaling. And exhaling. The liver channel very, very loosely works on the inside of the leg. Theoretically, where our index fingers are pointing up also into the rib cage. The wood element which is what the liver and the gallbladder are connected to, likes to grow, it likes to expand like a tree. Inhaling all the way up. Exhaling as we float back. Inhaling all the way up. Exhaling as we float back. Let's close. Okay, we're gonna do the exercise again but I wanted to give us a quick break. So shake it out if you need to. We're gonna do a few more exercises. So start to gauge how you felt with that last stance. Maybe if your knees were feeling great, if your back was feeling great, you want to open up the stance a little further and really accentuate that stretch right, in the rib cage and in the legs. If that felt like it was a little too aggressive, go ahead and shorten the stance. Still keeping the knees slightly bent, you never, you typically don't want the knees locked. And then simply using the mind's eye to help accentuate the movements, okay? on each side. So opening. Position the hand. Four finger pointing under. Thumb pointing over. Through the nose. The gaze only becomes engaged once you're looking over the shoulder.
Let's do two more times on each side, inhaling, and then exhaling. Once you're ready, go ahead and bring that left foot back to the right for closing. Making sure the feet are together. Transferring some of that chi to the palm. And then traditionally, women place their right hand first, left hand on top of the lower dantian. Men place their uh, left hand first and then right hand on top. And I am not going to mirror you. So we're all going to go up our right and down our left. Starting to gather some of that Chi into the lower Dantian. And then circling the other way up the left and down the right. We're now concentrating that energy. Resting the palms at the lower Dantian, we're closing the eyes. And as we inhale through the nose, we're guiding the breath, guiding the chi to the lower Dantian, allowing it to fill up with energy. And as we exhale, we're allowing that energy to settle and store so that we may use it throughout the rest of the day. Inhaling, guiding all that chi that you've been cultivating over the past half hour into the lower Dantian. And as you exhale, allowing that energy to settle and store so that you may use it throughout the rest of your day. Inhaling and exhaling at your own pace. Thank you, thank you, thank you so very, very much for practicing with me this Monday. Um, I hope you like that exercise. That exercise is really great. Um, it's being a liver and gallbladder exercise for uh, that any type of frustration or irritation. But maybe I did it every once in a while. So um, just play with it and enjoy it. And hey, do you answer questions? Hey, good morning, everybody. Yay! <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Um, let me see, how do we switch this over? 
do. I see you. Okay. You see me? Oh, okay. Great. I do. Um, so I just want to go over a few notes today to try to help improve um, your practice and what you can do. Oh, we have a question first. Hang on. Let's see. Mm -hmm. When we take a deep breath, do we fill the abdomen first and the chest and chest first and down? Okay. So that's a really good question. It depends on the exercise. Now, if we are doing more of a lung exercise, like we were doing before with the Reach for Happiness, uh, we do want to focus more on our lungs. But otherwise, we do try to practice more abdominal breathing, meaning filling up your lower belly first and then filling up your chest as well. Um, now, not everyone has learned that yet, so we haven't. Qigong's a, there's many layers of Qigong, and breath is definitely one of those things where there's a lot of different layers to it. Uh, right now, we just want to have you focus more on the bigger picture, the 30,000 foot level, so that you can really get your practice going. Uh, but over time, we do want to work on our breath, and we're going to do a future session where we focus more on how to breathe and different techniques of breathing. But right now, uh, don't worry too much about it, if, especially if you're just starting out, because there's, there's a lot of potential things you could be thinking about. But with Qigong, we want to make sure that your mind intent is clear. So if your mind is thinking about all these things like, uh, what, did I do this? Am I doing that? Did I, do I check off this box? Uh, you know, bigger picture. Do practicing Qigong and then start adding these elements in as you get more comfortable. Uh, that's my recommended strategy going forward. Um, but yeah, we will definitely do a class to cover um, different types of breathing. But right now, just do more natural breathing and breathing in deep. And I do want to, the, the exercise that we learned today, the uh, turn and look back exercise, this is actually one of my favorites in this series, mainly because uh, it's also a really good time to do it right now. In Chinese medicine, we look at the springtime as the time of the liver and gallbladder, which is what this particular exercise is really good for. Um, and one of the things that is so important is that body-mind connection especially with liver and gallbladder, the emotion is anger and frustration. And, you know, it used to be that LA roads are really busy and there's a lot of traffic. And you just really feel that key stagnation. She's not moving on the freeways. But now the, the, the freeways are empty, but we're all stuck at home. So now we have energetically stuck energy because we really can't go out and do all the things we want to do because we're all trying to not get sick and not trying to spread the virus around. So being stuck at home means you have all this pent up liver energy. And in springtime, springtime things want to grow, things want to sprout, things want to flourish. And so you see like outside, it's bright, it looks beautiful, sunny, it looks warm. And we all want to go outside, we want to do stuff. So, you know, having to force ourselves to stay in is definitely very hard. So doing this type of exercise will help you ease that liver energy, help you ease that frustration and tension. And the other thing I wanna mention is, you know, all these different, not all of you are familiar with five elements yet, but, I, but it's a really fascinating part and it's a foundation of Qigong and Chinese medicine. And five elements is how things interact in the universe. And so we look at the springtime is the wood time, the liver gallbladder element, the mother, or what generates and what, what creates wood, is water. So water is all about wisdom and knowledge. And, and so if you're not able to you know, utilize a lot of wood energy, I would recommend continuing to cultivate your water. Meditation is very water. So practice like this is very water. But it's also combined with some wood because we do a lot of movement type bases. Um, so, uh, Qigong meditation, still meditations are really good for cultivating water. Reading um, is also really good. Just, you know, so if you're doing a lot of Netflix and, and YouTube, uh, don't just watch the entertaining stuff. Try to, you know, spend a little time every day to learn something educational as well. Uh, something that, you know, in, improves your knowledge, improves your wisdom, uh, gives you a new perspective on life. Um, so I do encourage doing that every day. There's a few other simple practical things I want to also cover 
in the next few minutes about how to improve your Qigong practice. So number one is making sure, I talk about sleep a lot, but sleep is so important. If you're sleeping well, then everything else lines up really easily during the day. If you're not sleeping well, it just makes everything else much harder. So try to, in the springtime, we try to sleep early and get up early. Right now the sunrise is about 6.45 or so. So try to get up around 6.30. Um, and then you can count backwards from there and you just wanna to try to get about eight hours. So that puts us at around 10.30. And, and liver time for us, liver gallbladder time, the time of wood, what's really important is that 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. time. Uh, you want to make sure that, that that's called black time, excuse me. So you want to make sure that uh, you want to be sleeping at that time so that your liver gallbladder energy is recharging between 11 and 3 a.m. Um, so that's also an important part of the practice. So getting enough sleep, eating well is very important. So, um, and not Oreos or chips or candy, okay? I know a lot of, I know stress eating may be a thing right now um, because that, also soothe the liver energy, especially sweets. Uh, so try to minimize how many sweets you're having uh, in a day. Okay, so other practical things to, to um, be mindful of is uh, when we breathe uh, in Qigong, the breathing is more of a, a silent breath, so you don't wanna breathe too loudly like <sighs> So we don't really do that much in Qigong. We wanna try to keep things easy. And so even the breath, you wanna make it easy and pretty silent. So you're not really able to hear yourself breathe. You're not like straining. You're not making a, too much of an added effort to breathe. Just regular, quiet breathing. Okay, so we are breathing deep, but nice and smooth and easy. Okay, so, so the breath should be quiet. Uh, also just relaxing overall. With Qigong, we're not trying, it's not aerobics, it's not, power yoga, uh, we're really trying to keep things easy. The reason why we do that is because the easier things are in your body, you're not, you're not tensing, you're not straining. That way the energy moves smoothly through you. And we want to try to minimize how much you're, you're, you're straining. So that's why it's very important in terms of your form to really keep within your comfort zone. Uh, you, wanna, you don't want to go move into pain. You don't want to do stuff that you really feel uncomfortable, you feel unbalanced. Bring it back a little bit. All of us are very different. I mean, we all wish we were Olympic gymnasts, but reality is uh, we're probably all not. <laughs> um, and so you want to really stay within your body and what it allows you to do. And that will go a, a lot longer way for you than trying to do what you think you should be doing do what you can do, listen to your body. And that's another thing that's really important. While you listen to your body, you're really connecting your mind and your body together. And that connection is so important as you practice more, okay? Okay, so a couple of other practical tips. Uh, if you find yourself hungry uh, during the practice, I would recommend trying to eat a little tiny bit, not, not a lot of food, you don't wanna have a full meal, because then you have the opposite effect. Why? Okay, so if you're hungry, that's where your energy is going. All right, so I talked about this a few times before, is where your mind goes, your energy follows. So if you're hungry, your mind is going to your stomach. And if you're trying to do a liver gallbladder exercise, then you know all the energy is going there. So you wanna make sure that you try to keep the energy where it is. And eat a little bit, that way, you don't get distracted. Similarly, you don't want to get too full because then you're like, oh man, I ate a lot. And then all your energy is there too. And all the energy is being there means that you don't have a lot of energy to move with Qigong. So if you're doing a liver exercise, you don't have as much for that liver, that, low, that gallbladder. Okay. Another similar point is showering. Okay. So if you do shower in the morning, try to shower either before Qigong or maybe wait about 30 minutes after Qigong. Uh, especially if you're a beginner, uh, this is important because we're trying, to, we're trying to practice, we're trying to move energy, and then we're trying to store that energy. And it takes some time to help fully store all the energy that you generated. So you don't wanna take a shower right away because it'll scatter the energy you just generated. So wait about 30 minutes after, if you do shower in the mornings, uh, if, or you can shower before that works as well.
Okay. So those are just some practical tips to help you with your practice. And uh, that's it for today. So thank you very much for coming. And uh, we hope to see you tomorrow.